Okay, everyone, welcome back to Crow Country. We've got a puzzle, and I think what we should do, all right, basically it's a number code, but it says my first is in Grinner, but also in Goblin. My second is in Guest, not in Puddle, blah, blah, blah. Before we do this, let's look at the slideshow, and let's write down the codes. So, this one says Puddle. Let's write these down, all right? Puddle. Emerge around 80% root excavation. I pray this is my final entry. I cannot imagine how anything beyond this point will be capable of emergence. Puddles experience widespread cell necrosis. They are quite literally melting. Ew. So, basically, they're mining. They're getting all this gold out of this, whatever these creatures are. But they're also causing mutations of humans. So, Puddle is 3973. Okay. Guest. Merge at 50% root excavation. It varies from specimen to specimen, but they largely retain human-like appearance. Most distressing, they're capable of a limited non-verbal form of vocalization. So, guest is 3762. Alright. Goblin. 1739. Emerge at 55% root excavation. Despite their small stature, I concluded they are not infants. On the contrary, they may be senior variants of the guests. Their advanced age causes a weaker genetic makeup, which has diminished their anatomy upon emergence. So this is Goblin. 1739. Okay. We've got Spindle. These are the creepy things. Emerged around 60% root excavation. Much of their muscle and fat is missing. Their bones have elongated. The bone mass is spread more thinly, and consequently, the bones are brittle. Additionally, without sufficient flesh and cushioning, their joints are weak. So, spindle. 6413. Okay. Lumber. Emerge around 60% root excavation at the same time as the spindles. The opposite phenomenon is observed. The lumbers are stiff, without excessive muscle and fat. Perhaps this could explain why spindles have insufficient flesh. The lumber. One, three, four, seven. Gotta write down all these combinations. Grimer or Grinner. Alright. Emerge around 70% root excavation. The form is bipedal, but other similarities to a human body are quickly disappearing. In terms of anatomy, each specimen is vastly different from the next. Okay? So Grinner. Five five nine two, and we did puddle. Okay, so now that we have all these written down, now we can go look at the the actual puzzle. Okay, so my first is in Grinner, but also in Goblin. So Grinner is five five nine two. Goblin is one seven three nine. The only number in both is nine. So the first number is nine. My second is in Guest, but not in Puddle or Spindle. So Guest is 3762. Puddle is 3973. So it could be 9. No way. Excuse me. It's in Guest, but not in Puddle or Spindle. 3762, 3973. So it could be 6 or 2. Spindle is 6413. So it has to be two. It has to be the number two. So it's nine, two. Okay. My third is in Lumber and Goblin, but not in Puddle. So my third is in Lumber and Goblin. Lumber is one, three, four, seven. Goblin is one, seven, three, nine. So it could be one. It could be three. It could be seven, but not in Puddle. Puddle is Three nine seven three, so it's got to be one. Okay, and then lastly, my fourth is notable only by its absence. So, what number is not in any of these? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no eight, so it's probably nine two one eight or nine two one zero because there's also no zeros. So it could be nine two one eight or zero. That's the code. We have the code when we get to the control room elevator switch. 
We don't know where that is, but now we have the code. Okay. <laughs> Tells it. Control room, no authorized entry. Okay. Oh, uh, we got some wild stuff in here. A screen, there's a button underneath. 14. That, what happened? What the hell happened? <laughs> I have no idea. Just a banana peel. Metal door will not open. Monitor. It's a video feed from a security camera. Something on the screen. It's moving. Talk to it. Hello? What are you? What do you want? It's, a, it's probably the boss. How much you want to bet that's the final boss of the game? Right there. Oh, look. Video from the security camera. That's my car. Arthur's still inside. Talk to him. Arthur, can you hear me? Mara, is that you? I can't see you. Where are you? I'm in a control room. A control room? Is it cool? Yeah, it's really cool. I'm jealous. You gotta go on a real adventure. Arthur, how are you feeling? Not great. Just stay there, okay? Are you coming back? Are we gonna leave? Say yes or hang up. Yeah, I'm coming. I'll be back soon. Okay, good. Alright. So. 9, 2, 1, 8. It worked! That's it. Elevator power grid. An electrical grid with five lights. All five lights are now green. But the question is... Oh! Once we solve the battery puzzle, we can now take that elevator down to the center area. We can't enter from the sides. We actually enter from the center. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. Okay. Yes, CE, send me that email. Sounds good. Okay. So. We're good. I think what we do now that we've activated that, we go all the way back to the staff hallway. No. We go all the way back to the delivery garage. We talk to that woman. We tell her we need her help. We unlock that door with the gold key. She goes in there to operate the ride. We get on the ride. We get on the ride. That's how we get the battery from the mermaid in the seven seas. We take that battery back underground. And we go charge it in the charge room. Then we go to the center area. We put that battery into the crow. We activate the crow. It gets out of the way. Then we go down the elevator. And we get to the final part of the game. It seems like we're now in the home stretch, guys. It certainly seems that way. So I guess what we should do, we should go underground, because we already killed all the enemies underground. It makes sense. Just go down the elevator, go all the way around, and then emerge out at the delivery garage. That seems like the best way to go about this. Oh, look. There's nothing there. Oh, boy. It moved. Whatever that was. Oh! Huh. Is that floor panel code to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? What the fuck does that mean? How do you set a floor panel code to one, two, three, four, five, six? What does that mean? How the fuck would I do that? Kill it? I think we killed it. Holy shit. Two grenades and a shotgun blast. Not so bad. <laughs> oh, look. One. Two. Three. We're having another one. One. 
two. Why does it? Oh, one, two, three. It reset. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. What the fuck? Why does it do a single... I don't get it. It resets it for some reason. I don't know why it's resetting. This is dumb. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Now it just went to six. See that? What the fuck? It doesn't work. When I hit when I hit six, it erases the previous digits. Okay. What? That is so weird. I totally did that already. Alright. Well, we killed the monster anyway. <laughs> no big deal. Whew. Okay. I guess we save. Save again. Okay, we go back out, we go to the elevator, we go downstairs. That's the next uh, thing to do. So the weird thing about this is, there's definitely the battery left. We're gonna charge the battery, but there's still two item components. And I don't know what they're gonna be. You would think this would be like a gun, but what gun have we not got? We did all the secret puzzles. I don't even, I'm not even aware of any other puzzles in the game. So I'm not actually sure like what we're missing. Hmm. Maybe there's a secret weapon or something, I don't know. Okay. Go back down. Again, you're asking what game scared me the most. Overall, the game that was the first scary game to me ever was Resident Evil 1. I had literally never played a real horror game before that, and that game scared the crap out of me for sure. Um, with its jump scares and its limited ammo and its very creepy soundtrack and feeling. So, RE1 would be my answer. Okay, so we're gonna run through there, go this way, hook a hook down, go down there, then the southwest is where we're gonna come up. their first experience with something you always like resonates as the best right and for me resident evil one was that it was so scary so by the way the enemy's in here anybody get past this enemy and see if there's items on the left hand side but oh, it's still there god damn this thing i want to see what's on the left hand side there might be items in there i didn't get but probably not worth it ultimately probably not worth getting because i'll probably waste so much ammo on that dude right probably not worth it all right outlast outlast one was good it had some some legit scares a lot of gore okay okay let's go save Actually, if we just use the elevator up, I think there's a save in that room as well. I think what I need to do... Let's save. Oh, you can't save in this room? 
Oh shit, I thought you could. I totally thought you could. I thought this was going to be a save room. It's not. Save room is the submarine. Alright, let's go open the door. Let's go open the door. With the gold key. Okay. Yar. Oh, can answer the phone. There's a grenade in here, too. Let's answer the phone first. <coughs> Hello? You're still alive. I know it's dangerous up there. A lot of them got out into the open. But I know you brought a gun. Have you been killing them? The guests? <coughs> there are no shit to continue living. The ones that emer emerged more recently, even more so. As I continued the root excavation, the guests became even less... Well, some of them aren't even bipedal anymore. It goes without saying that we cannot let them leave pro county, pro country. We cannot afford to let them infect anyone else. What are they? Who are they? They are irreversible. That's it. Wow. What a... What a jerk. It's a pizza box. Old pieces of pizza are inside. I'm not hungry enough to eat it. <laughs> so... Got a grenade. Good, because I don't have any left. This is probably how you get back from the ride. Okay. This must be how you operate the boat ride. I don't see the point of moving it if I'm not in it. I can't reach the control panel when I'm sitting in the boat. I might need some help. And that's where you go get the woman's help. Okay. So, before we do it, just in case there's some level of challenge to it, maybe keeping the woman alive, let's go save in the sub. Is Mara infected? Well, she's been hurt, but she's been using these antidotes. And it's not, it's not, you know, clear if that actually is holding off any kind of infection or not. She has been hurt by the enemies, though. Okay. Now we'll go back to the woman. You have shielded the lawyer. I forgot her name. Let's see if the lawyer will join me. Anything I can do for you? Ask for help. Actually, there is something. I need to get through the boat ride in the Ocean Kingdom area. Seven Seas? Yeah, I could use your help to operate the controls. Have you opened the door to the control room? Yes, it's open. Nice work. I'll head to the control room. You go to the boat boarding area. See you there. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, she says, I think everyone's infected except the cop. The cop claims that he never, uh, he never took any damage. He never got hit. That's what he's saying, anyway. I don't know if you can trust him, but that's what he said. Do, 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 do. Okay, so she should be in there. No, these are gunner glasses. They're not prescription. All they do is block blue light. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. I, can I can't get guarantee this will be safe. Should I start the ride? Yes. So let's see what's over there. Like I said, the battery is inside the mermaid. It's supposed to move out of the way. I think it's done manually from the control panel. I wonder why Julie didn't press the button. Uh-oh. I think we know why. She's probably dead. Right? Nice. That's fake. There's no way that's real. That looks so fake. The most ornate switch I've ever seen. They do. I don't know. Pulled the switch. Didn't do anything. The treasure chest actually opens a control box.
Do we know which mermaid has the battery? We don't, do we? The green one? We don't know what mermaid has the battery. Shit. The last I grapple with thee from heart's hell I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I put my last breath, put my last breath at thee. He's blocking the boat, I can't continue the ride. How would I get at the batteries? Uh that ain't gonna work. Oh. Aha. Nope. It's a kitchen shotgun shells. Oh, nice. So each mermaid might have a different item inside of them. Okay. battery I can't use it leave it alone so this one's no good we have to look go through all the batteries okay all right we got a good battery nice one more to do Okay, so we got some bonus shotgun shells. We're checking out all four of them. That's good. Anything else? No? Okay. Guess we're going this way. This is the door. Let me guess. Natalie either left or she's dead. <clears throat> oh, boy. There's a blood stain, and that wasn't there before. What's this? A blood stain. These are Julie's glasses. What happened to her? Julie is probably dead. Something came out of the wall. That's no good. Oh, boy. Whoa, what happened? Why is everything so creepy? Everything just changed. What the... What is going on in here? Well, let's save again, and then we're going to go underground and charge this battery. Looks like the whole atmosphere changed. What happened? Okay. Go back. We're going to go back underground, go charge this battery. really odd. What the heck is going on? Oh, boy. Get those guys. Let me guess, the whole slew of monsters are showing up now. We're gonna have to fight our way to charge the battery, I bet. I bet all the rooms are full of monsters now. <clears throat> so, we have to head east. Yup. No new enemies? I'm shocked. I thought for sure there'd be new enemies. Okay. No, that wasn't Julie on the ground. That was an enemy. A dead, a dead mutation. What the hell? That wasn't there before. That definitely wasn't there before. All right, battery time. Charge that battery. <laughs> uh, 
Eyes. So, we're missing one item. What is it? Probably an endgame item, I bet. Probably the final item you get in the underground. <laughs> Cool, cool. All right. So now the question is, what's the fastest way to the statue? Well, we go to the utility corridor to the haunted hilltop straight there. We haven't been there in a while. It's probably full of monsters, right? But at least we can save in the utility corridor. There's a save room there. So you know what? We actually know there won't be any monsters in the utility corridor because there's no monsters in the save room. That's what we should do. Utility corridor, save, then make a break to the central area, put the battery in the crow statue, get it moving, go down, and that's the finale of the game, right? <clears throat> All right. Oh, shit. That was it right there. I missed it. Fuck. Got too excited. Okay. <laughs> In theory, there should be no enemies here. Don't drink coffee. Making sure there's nothing else here that I left behind. I don't think so. All right, let's save. I should probably heal. I have enough. Let's heal. Okay. So, now we have to make a beeline through the haunted area, which probably is going to be full of new enemies at this point. Yep. And then we're going to go to the Crow Country Central Area. Of course, we know that's full of enemies. So the question is, do I want to fight everything? Or do I want to try to just run to the statue and get the battery in and get it moving? It might be a pain, though. But I might have a big fight on my hands to clear out the central area. Plus, with the crow statue moving, you might have to clear out that area to keep it going. The funny part is, we don't actually know what happens. The crow gets to the entrance. What does it do? Anything? I wonder if you should follow it. Or not, right? Like, should we follow the crow or not? I don't know. I mean, we could experiment with that. But we're going to have to fight a lot of enemies to do that. There's a lot of enemies in that central area. Uh, and then it's going to take us into the underground. And this is all new. We haven't been to any of these rooms. I'm going to assume that that thing right there is like the final boss, right? Like, whatever that is. Probably going to have to go down there and see what's the origin of all this gold and everything. What's causing all the mutations. And that's probably where Ed Crow is too, right? All right, in the meantime, I just received a $10 tip. Thank you so much to the villain. He says, hat time, loving the retro horror game. This reminds me of Parasite Eve. It's it definitely reminiscent of a lot of old horror games. In the way it's designed and its visuals. I love this save room music. It's so relaxing. All right, and indeed, we're going to have a hat. Thanks to the villain. Thank you to the villain for that. So... Let's do a poll for the hat. First of all. Which hat is Pro Country Best? The cowboy hat, the beret, the Pikachu hat, or how about the red fedora? There you go. Please vote. Thank you guys so much for the support. Also, I'm going to pause the recording right now because my wife has arrived home. I want to see where Jasper is. and I'm going to use the restroom and I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. And I've put on my protective armor for the conclusion of this playthrough. <laughs> People voted for Pika Pikachu for the finale. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's run through this haunted area 
get to the crow area and probably have to fight off a bunch of enemies, I'm thinking. Oh, it's so dark now. You know why they did this? Because they totally want you to, like, run into shit. It is so dark. Oh, shit, what was that? Yo, I was, that was a jump scare. Legit got me. It was a jump scare sound. I don't know what it was. Holy shit. What the fuck? Yo, why is it pitch black? I don't like this at all. Where'd all the enemies go? Okay. Now we gotta get him going. Oh shit, what was that? Turntable, there we go. What is that? Is someone firing a bullet? There he goes. Just like that, it walked out of my life. Here's the elevator. But, where did it go? I think someone's firing bullets. Maybe it's the cop. It looked like bullets flying, right? Look. It's a big crow. He's making his way out of the park. I won't blame him. It'd be nice just to walk away. So he opened the door, but we can't? We can't go that way. I want to go back and see if the guy's okay in the car with all the lights off. Arthur, did a police officer come by here? Yeah, he was on a bike. Oh, Alright, we already did this. That's it? No other talk? Wow, nothing. Alright, that's it. We're gonna go down this new elevator. Right? We should probably save in the train room again. Am I gonna play Luigi's Mansion 2 HD? I don't know. I'm interested in it. But we're probably not gonna have time, because just, just think about this coming week. In less than a week's time, we have Still Wakes the Deep. Within two days of that, or three days after that, we got the Dark Souls... Uh, Shadows of the Erdtree DLC, which is going to be like 40 hours long, right? Then, after that, we've got the Street Fighter 6 and Bison update. And that's all within like one week. So with all that coming out, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do the other stuff. Like, there's the Luigi's Mansion 2. There's also another thing, too, that I wrote down that I was interested in. But sadly, I don't think we're going to have enough time to do them. Maybe we could save them, because, th by the way, July and August are very slow for game releases. Like, really, really slow. So it might make a lot more sense to just wait until then and then do some of these games then that we're missing out on time to do now. You know what I mean? Okay. Maybe in October, says Fed Roger. Maybe. I, I'm thinking the summer, though. Like, I really feel like, like July, August are going to be so dead with almost nothing going on that <clears throat> we should save those games for then and like play them all over the summer. Okay, we're good. We're going down to a brand new area, everyone. Let's see where this takes us. We haven't been here yet. Going down. I think the idea was you didn't know you had to power this. You would have to backtrack to go do what we just did in Ed Crow's office, but we did it first. Now we can just go right into the finale. Oh, boy. Well, this is a fun area. Oh, fuck me. Okay, then. <laughs> Woo! Oh, no. Is it the cop? The cop's dead. Oh, no. Oh, God. It's Harrison. He's dead. He must have been attacked by those. Wait, no. He was shot? Harrison, I'm so sorry. 
Harrison James, ID number 05061, date of birth January 12, 1965, firearm expert. Damn, he got murdered. Oh, look! So, wait a minute. So, who's she? She's not a cop. She's not a cop at all. See? The ID card that we had was fake. Her name and ID was placed over it. Look at that. So she was faking all along. She was never a cop, and that's what we were suspecting. That's why he didn't recognize her. It was all a trick. She was never a cop. Wow. So who is she? <laughs> What's that? A med kit. So this is where they were cutting pieces off. See that? A bag? It's a grubby old sports bag, but seems familiar. It's empty. work it does the pipes are now open so now we can go back if we need to for some reason I don't know why we would need to but we can now we now have ways back see that okay <clears throat> maybe we should save while we're here because we don't know what we're about to fight What am I talking about? There's no save room here. Yeah, forget it. We'll go back. Okay. So who is Mara? We don't know who she really is, but she, she's not a cop. Her ID was fake. Okay. What the hell is this? A staff memo. The mining lanterns are really old and need replacing. Any kind of spark tends to set off the oil that's trapped inside. If that happens, give it a whack to disperse the oil. The flames should go out. What? <clears throat> are they talking about these? There's one, two, three, four. There's eight lanterns. So maybe we're supposed to shoot them? I think what you're supposed to do shoot the lanterns to light them up and the amount of lanterns you shoot will open gates see that now we have plenty of ammo so we're okay for this let's test the theory shoot one get shotgun ammo two we need five Okay, so now, if we do seven, we could just continue on. Do we want the handgun ammo in the first aid? No, I don't care. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to do seven, and we're going to continue on. I don't care about those items. There you go. Seven bullets used. No big deal. Who's here? Tolman. Tolman, I can't let you. Listen, Harrison is dead. Harrison James, the police detect. I know who he is. I'm sorry, Mara. You shouldn't have come here. It was only a matter of time before one of those creatures... He was shot with a gun. Shit. Yeah, look. Look behind us. You know who did it? Oh, I think you probably got a good idea. Marvin, you? Look, kid, this is nothing personal, okay? Put down the gun, Trumbull. And then what, huh? Go home? Forget the whole thing ever happened? The feds would be kicking down my door within the week. I'm culpable for all this shit. I know. I am too. 
But Mara is not, so leave her out of this. She knows way too much. You think she won't rat us out? Hell, she already tried. She was getting real chatty with that pretty boy officer. I tried to stop him from coming. I kept telling him to leave. Well, he didn't leave, did he? And neither did you. And now it's too late? What was that? No idea. Uh-oh. Bullshit. If this is some sort of trick, I ain't... <laughs> okay, then. It's Julie. Where am I? The heck? Julie? Hey. What's going on? What are you doing in there? I'll tell you if you help me out of this thing. But gosh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Holman, would you give me a hand? Sure. Julie, I thought you'd been... I mean, I came out of the boat ride and you were gone. There was blood. Something grabbed me and dragged me backwards into the van. What was it? Whatever it was, there are several more of them hiding out in these pipes. It's pitch black in there, but I could hear them and smell them. And what, they tried to kill you? No, mostly they shook me around and made a bunch of noise. Shouting, weeping, moaning, whatever you'd call it. Sounds about right. What do you mean? They're angry, but they don't want to kill us. They're trying to communicate. Mara, you haven't introduced me? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Julie, this is Tolman. He works for Edward Crow. And Tolman, this is Julie Barron. She's a lawyer. She was hired by the Marshall family, Elaine Marshall's family. I see. What are you two doing down here? Someone's been killed, shot, a police officer. Goodness me. Tolman here was just about to go deal with it, weren't you? I... I'll come with you. I have experience with this kind of thing. Good, okay, thanks. Mara. Something else. Natalie Crow is waiting in Edward Crow's office. Would you go see how she's doing? <laughs> Crow's daughter? Sure, of course. I'd love a chance to talk to her, actually. You're not... One last thing. Arthur Mole. He's out in the staff parking area in my white Fiesta. Would you check on him, too? I've left him alone way too long. Of course, uh, we can do that, too. Thank you. Mara, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to go do what I came here to do. We'll be waiting by your car, okay? Okay? Thanks. Come along, Mr. Tolman. I've got lots to do. <laughs> oh, boy. What is about to happen? Don't know? Let's find out. Wow. <laughs> Pool of water. It's clean. Is it a spring? Let's not touch it yet. Here we've got a ladder. Well, should we wash our face in this thing? I don't know what it's going to do. God, that feels better. I didn't realize how filthy I was. What did that do? I have no idea. Maybe it healed us? I don't know. <laughs> David, uh, I talked about that, but yeah, Flight Simulator looks great, and I definitely want to check it out when it comes out in November. Very nice. The Ultra Long Ladder, a la Metal Gear Solid 3. Descent. Uh, nice creepy music for the end. So what the hell is Ed Crow doing hiding way down here? Fox, you enjoy watching Star Wars Episode 2 tonight. Don't know what that has anything to do with anything, but I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Told you, that's a Metal Gear Solid 3 ladder. <laughs> Would have been nice if she had her light on. Well. Oh, God, there is gore everywhere in this room. Uh, 
It is a save room. I hear the save room music. I just don't see where you save yet. Right? I'd like to save before I do anything. What the fuck? There's an axe? Oh, God. Where is the save? I hear it. Do you see any fire anywhere? The bed. The sweeper crow was sleeping. The sheets are stained with blood. The hazmat suit has a fine layer of dust. He's not wearing it anymore. Microwave with a first aid inside. A sealed envelope for Natalie. I won't open it. Is this it? Look. A Bunsen burner. That's the save point. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's save and then let's investigate this room. This, an intercom. Talk. Mr. Crow, I'm here, I'm in your lab. Hello, Elaine. Open the door. I will. But first, please pick up the glass vials I've laid out on the counter. <laughs> Why? Please, fine. Handgun ammo. All these items. The finale. See here. Shotgun shells. This is where he was using to call us. The phone's been left off the hook. Photos saved up on the wall. Natalie Crow, Edward Crow's daughter. Home and the engineer Crow put in charge of root excavation. The next one is a photo of me. When did he take this? <clears throat> Julie Barron, the lawyer hired by Elaine Marshall's family. Arthur Mole, a teenager who wanted to photograph the guests. Marvin Trumbull, responsible for Crow's fake gold mine. Douglas Pike, who was in charge of building the actual theme park. Finally, Harrison James, who was the police officer sent to look for Edward Crow. Piece of paper. Something's written. But I can't make sense of it. It's all nonsense. So basically, he lost his humanity. He got mutated down here. Pretty obvious. Coward, <laughs> there's a lever. Her hair color changed. Her purple washed out. Who the hell is she for real? We're about to find out. There's going to be a big plot twist. But obviously this is showing that she's not who she says she is. She's not a cop. She's been hiding her identity. Who the hell is she? It's a set of vials. Five glass vials, each with the same pale green liquid inside. Take them. Need to free up space? I'll put down other objects I'm carrying. I won't need them. Ah! So, took the vials... Left in their place, all the other items I collected. The police ID card I took from Harrison James. The bronze key given to me by a fairy. The crank handle I found in a safe. The ruby gemstone that was hidden in a painting of a demon. The chain I took from the neck of a mechanical swan. The mask I excavated from a block of resin. The trident I took out of a witch's cauldron. The silver key that was hidden in Neptune's palace. The data disc I got from the change machine in an arcade. The acid bottle I took from a cell in a dungeon. The golden key I found trapped inside of a fairy's head. The battery I pulled from the stomach of a robotic mermaid. Good times. So there you go. All your items removed. All you have left is six or five glass vials. You don't know what they are. It says I'm infected. Look. Condition infected. And it didn't say that before. Oh. That's different. And it says your name is Elaine. Your name is Elaine. So you are... Oh my god, you're Elaine. What a twist. That's why you're infected. It changed her name to Elaine in the dialogue when he called her Elaine? Oh. 
Wow. Well, that's wild. Is there anything else in here? Like this axe. An elevator? A relatively simple way to get to the surface. It doesn't work anymore. Someone drew an axe through it through the control panel. Where would this have come out? Oh, we actually don't have a map. We don't know where we are. We don't have a map. So we don't know where this would have come out. Huh. Else, or we're good. I guess we're good. Wonder what's in the envelope for Natalie. Huh. All right. We should save again, and we're gonna continue on here for the finale, the end, the end of the game, right? I guess I'll probably make a new part for that. All right, everyone. In the next part, it's the finale of Crow Country. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.